mention one thing. I'm a sculptor, not, not an engineer. But I, in my whole life, I always like to tinker and, and get some ideas out. And sometimes I do it a little bit and then trash it. And again, some new idea coming. So I, I, I'm keeping myself busy beside my sculpture work. So, Narendraji, can you explain what we are looking at up here? I think it's a model, working model for harnessing wave energy. Mm -hmm. And this is how it, might, it will work. Is here's a block of wood here, mm -hmm. hinge here. So when if wave comes from this side, it can lift it up because the floating action so it will go up and wave. We receive then, then it falls, and then another wave comes in, and so it can continuously going. The wheel will be going in one direction. My both the actions lifting and, and falling. Mm -hmm. So, if I'm understanding it correctly. As the waves come and hit the drum, the drum goes up with the wave going up, and when the wave recedes, the drum comes down. This repetitive motion, we can harness electricity or wave energy out of this. Out of this wheel turning, right. we can hook it up on any, any sort of generator sort of or, generator. correct, yeah. And yeah. then the, the innovative part of the design is that as your drum is moving up and down, the wheel is always moving in the same direction, in the same direction. So the generator and creation of power is happening yes. continuously in the same direction without wasting any electricity. And uh, this is a prototype model. Um, so essentially it's just demonstrating the principle, principle. of wave energy. It's not any reference to uh, the scale. It could be made in a bigger size, yes. materials yeah. could and be different. Go back to now, go to the engineering process now this next stage is define engineering and uh, and take the basic idea and then then make it make it more efficient in my mind is a uh, ocean is a solar battery fully charged all the time 24 hours every every day Right. So, Narendraji, how does this wheel work? How did you make it happen that it goes in the same direction? See, each wheel has a, has a cranking device, so it can only go one way. It engages, the other way it just free, turning free. So it's almost like a ratchet. Ratchet. Yeah. I see. Mm -hmm. And this ball is, is is hooked on the top. And this boy is hooked in, on the bottom, so it, it can give same reaction. Right. And, and these rubber pieces that I'm seeing, these ones, they are making sure that they're holding it, the pressure. It gives, it gives the right friction. Uh, against the wheel. Against the wheel, so it, it would not slip, but it would turn. Right. And that's my just simple solution, but then engineering it can be improvised it further. It even can be made into a gear system or anything can be made more more efficient and more. But here in this case, is I use everything more which would not rust with the water. So try to, to avoid metal or steel. Mm -hmm. Only steel parts are here which is be away from water. Mm -hmm. So that the idea is to just take it to men can hold it on both sides and go in the water level of the, over Lake Michigan. I see. So this summer you are planning to take it for a test, this yeah. prototype for a test, and see how it yeah, actually... Yeah, it, it, it just weather gets better. Right. Yeah. To just to check how effectively it works and if you can improvise yourself on this idea yeah. first, before it goes to the next level of sophisticated engineering. 
So, well, thank you very much, Narendra Ji, for sharing your invention with us. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, put together a team of students that um, will take his you know, initial design, his initial prototype that is uh, in front of us, um, and uh, try to redesign it and maybe try to make it a little bit more efficient uh, and also use um, uh, conventional technologies rather than wood, something more robust, more uh, uh, manufacturable. Also with a little bit of spin towards uh, being able to manufacture uh, very cheaply in the third world countries. Huh? So we use PVC pipes and things like that. And the, the student team enrolled in a class, uh, a product realization class, which I teach, and um, they have the entire semester to take uh, an idea and make a working prototype uh, and then test it. So that was the beginning of the, of the journey. small villages, places where they don't have a grid, um, something like we're talking about here, maybe a, a, a giant ship parked offshore wouldn't work, but maybe 20 or 30 of these yeah. might. Um, I mean, it seems like it's very adaptable. Yeah, but there's definitely a, a potential for scalability. Uh, uh, that's why I like this idea a lot, that you can either make it uh, power a village, or maybe even power one house, mm -hmm. or you can make it power an uh, entire town. If you Is a, a waves coming in, in, a, in a, um, 
a bit more power and the side is totally quiet so it can be housed on the uh, on the hardware wall and link them all together with the with the with the one one shaft or or all um, machine can be generating individual power and then it can be connected to electricity. So you don't know yet but the engineering um, people can, can decide which one is more more feasible economical. So you're talking about this sort of a, this, this sort of an item but a, a roll of them maybe hundreds or or, yeah. or more along a seawall or along a breakwater of some kind. And then either we can this shaft can be connected with one one to the other to the other and create a whole uh, machine linked together, mechanically linked together. Or as I said mentioned that each one can generate its own electricity and then collectively they can go out, out on the land. So that is the issue as to be I don't know. That's where the engineers come in. Yeah. How to do that.
And let, let me introduce um, Dr. Ilya Erdev, who is an engineer at uh, you know, College of Engineering at UWM, and he's quite gracious to, to give us this appointment. And we will start his uh, opinion and uh, uh, critique on, on the project we have been for the last three, four years. So he's here yet. Thank you, Narendra. Thank you, Ed. Good to be here. Me too. Thank you for coming. So you've had some time to look at this and think about it. Um, where I guess we'd just like to hear your thoughts on where this might go. Uh, yeah, I've had, I've had a little bit of time with this. Uh, when did we start? 2010? Two. Um, to either 2000, late 2009 or early 2010. Uh, 10. 2010. Um, that was the first time uh, I met Arendra, and uh, I remember he came to UWM and we had a little meeting with uh, several people involved in energy, uh, energy generation, energy and transmission. And uh, Arendra pitched his idea, he rolled out the blueprints of, the, uh, of his ideas. He was the CD with the video that they shot at the Berkeley Beach. Um, and um, I got excited right away. I thought it was an amazing, amazing uh, idea. And uh, I've never seen anything like that. And um, your students are, have been using it as been using it a teaching aid as well as uh, trying to work on the design? Yes. So what we did is we uh, put together a team of students that um, would take his yeah, initial design, his initial prototype that is uh, in front of us um, and um, try to redesign it and maybe try to make it a little bit more efficient um, and also use um, uh, conventional technologies rather than wood, something more robust, more uh, uh, manufacturable. Also with a little bit of spin towards uh, being able to manufacture it uh, very cheaply third world countries. Huh? So we use PVC pipes and things like that. And the, the student team enrolled in a class, uh, a product realization class, which I teach. And um, they have the entire semester to take uh, an idea and make a working prototype uh, and then test it. So that was the beginning of the, of the journey. Okay. Um, and Narendra, of course, generates more ideas that we can uh, process. Uh, and that's fantastic. He keeps us on, on our toes, that's for sure. Well, uh, Narendra, um, you want to talk to us a little bit about um, your ship, a uh, rocking ship and trolley idea? Yeah, sure. Both of the ideas I'm quite intrigued in. Uh, feel a little bit different direction than the first one we made. This is it works very really well and it can it can develop into into larger scale and so on. And ultimately my vision about this is to can it can mount on a on a harbor wall and so one side is a the waves coming in and, you know more more big, more power, and other side is totally quiet, so it can be housed on the uh, on the other wall and link them all together with the with the with the one one shaft, or, or all um, machine can be generating individual power, and then it can be connected to electricity. So you don't know yet, but that engineering. Um, People can, can decide which one is more more feasible economical. So you're talking about this sort of a, this, this sort of an item, but a, a roll of them, maybe hundreds or or, yeah. or more along a seawall or along a breakwater of some kind. And then 
either we can this shaft can be connected with one one to the other to the other and create a whole uh, machine linked together mechanically linked together or as I said mentioned that each one can generate its own electricity and then collectively they can go out, out on the land. So that is the issue has to be ironed out. That's where the engineers come in, yeah. how to do that. And uh, the thing I see between the, these and other two is uh, this one is still in, in, in contact with the water, which is a, a harsh water, a corroded water, salt, and so on. And harsh weather it takes. Uh, the other one, it can be mounted on the on the uh, uh, ocean liner or big big boat, uh, big sailboat with power that uh, what you call uh, uh, almost any kind of a decommissioned ship. Decommissioned large ocean liner, mm -hmm. either oil tanker, something with flat cargo, oil tankers or cargo. Mm -hmm. uh, many cases decommissioned by this yet has a lot of life to live to there to float. We don't we are not worried about moving it from one place to another in the world, but it can be be in one place and anchored and and made it a uh, uh, rock. So it kept again the waves coming and uh, can uh, generate water, generate electricity, and can be to the sent to shore like shore by cable. Mm -hmm. And uh, the idea in there is that, uh, in my mind, is the uh, ocean is a uh, solar battery fully charged all the time, 24 hours, every day. Uh, every day and if they would need to discharge it's already charged and this is kind of getting the power from yeah so i know that you're uh, very interested in uh, supplying power to small villages places where they don't have a grid um, something like we're talking about here maybe a, a, a giant ship parked offshore wouldn't work but maybe 20 or 30 of these yeah. that might um, I mean, it seems like it's very adaptable. Yeah, but there's definitely a, a potential for scalability. Uh, uh, that's why I like this idea a lot, but you can even make it uh, uh, power a village, or maybe even power one house, mm -hmm. or you can make it power an uh, entire town if you have a big house parked in the wake zone somewhere in, uh, in the port or mm -hmm. somewhere else. Um, the whole idea is, I think, unique in the sense that um, you can create a product that is contained. You don't have to deal with the um, uh, EPA and other agencies uh, in terms of installing something on the coast, mm -hmm. uh, which creates, you know, potential problems for deployment of these machines. Uh, you just have a, a hull that is anchored by the shore and the cable. Um, and another benefit of this technology is that it uses uh, uh, waves. It means that it's close to the shore. It means that transmitting energy is not a problem. Mm -hmm. Most of the wave energy uh, relies on buoys that are deployed away from the shore. And then you need cables and other things and that makes it very expensive. And the initial cost of deployment is really high. With these, you would just purchase a hull pocket and connect it to the... Uh, you could tow it anywhere and uh, yeah. set it up at anywhere there are waves. Yeah. So the, the um, a lot of uh, changes probably would have to be made to our uh, electrical grid uh, over time. We're talking about smart grids now and... Uh, micro grids. And micro grids and... Um, doesn't it seem like this sort of power would 
fit into that uh, scenario quite well? Um, yeah, I think so. Uh, I think it's very complementary to other alternative energy sources, solar, wind. Um, coastal uh, energy becomes more and more uh, a player in the area. Um, I think uh, it would probably still um, make sense to maintain uh, array of batteries mm -hmm. on this hull so you can uh, store the energy that you harvest. Uh, so in a sense the hull will become a little microgrid you know, with energy storage capabilities. Uh, and then you can integrate with other grids. Uh, but um, the biggest problem is uh, conversion. If you can efficiently convert wind energy to electric energy, uh, yeah. Okay. You call it. Yeah. Um, I want to mention one thing. I, I'm a sculptor, not not an engineer. But I, in my whole life, I only like to take care of and, and get some ideas out, and sometimes I do it a little bit, and then cash it and again some new idea coming so I, I, I'm keeping myself busy beside my sculpture work uh, which is kind of uh, using as a as a as an outlet to relax and things like that. Um, but so after I started this some of the friends who knew that I'm you know, spending my time on designing something unusual. So people started to send me clippings of uh, what is going on in, in the world in this subject. So I'm not really expert on knowing everything which is happening now. But I have some clippings coming. From those clippings, I've thought of uh, one thing that uh, um, what makes difference between this, my three or three projects, and the, what is going on in the, in the in the field by some other big, big companies and engineers. Uh, one thing strikes me is that uh, they're working with really harsh environment and trying to win that nature, which is very harsh and, and powerful. And here, my feeling is that we are working around knowing the nature and rather than fighting with it, uh, we are working, working with it, mm -hmm. and try to understand how we can use that energy without least of the, the danger on our side to fight and and try to conquer. Here we are working with it, and that's how I see it. And those whole idea is that our project will be completely sealed inside the hull and um, totally protected. The hull has been designed for many few thousand years and now come to the conclusion that we have very dependable floating system which can float forever almost. So we are using it what has been invented. So I'm saying it, we are not trying to invent a new meal <laughs> but trying to find the new use of the unique use of the invented wheel which already exists. Mm -hmm. that's, that's correct. I think the biggest challenge with this technology is um, to understand the nature of the body of water that you're using to harvest energy. So what is the wake or wave pattern? Um, because when you design it, you use it as your input mm -hmm. of energy that you convert. <coughs> and with uh, solar energy, for example, it's pretty predictable. You, know, you have a lot of solar arrays in the sunny areas of the world. Where almost every day is sunny. And you, you know what's what ends up your day. The math is easy. You know the efficiency of exactly. your the math is equipment. Easy. Yep. Uh, the wind is a little bit trickier, so you're already entering a, you know, a lot of unknowns. And with water it becomes a thing even more tricky, uh, because there's so many factors uh, that will affect it. If 
you, for example, park your hull in a, a busy harbor, uh, the weight will depend on the traffic. Mm -hmm. traffic. Mm -hmm. So it can be a good thing or it can be a bad thing. Mm -hmm. uh, if you just park it in an open body of water, then you rely on the weather, uh, the most cycle. So it, it, is, it is tricky, it's, uh, I think uh, most of the research uh, in this area should be focused on uh, getting this solid data on the, the weather and the water conditions that can be used by engineers as and, a starting point. And that was something we really never talked about or thought about was waves. We were just thinking of natural wind generated uh, waves and um, the, the idea of having um, using wake energy is that's awesome because no matter where there are big boats, there are big wakes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, whether the wind's blowing or not. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, this is the kind of technology because of its scalability. Uh, a small prototype can be built and tested on Lake Okachi. Where no. you have areas with lots of wakes, and I know they say no wake area, but there's tons of wakes. Something like this can be tested. The, um, the problem for us is understanding what the cost is versus the return. Yeah, how, how, how difficult is that to figure out? What you know, first of all, you, you uh, maximize the efficiency, and then you, then you can get some output, and then you can discover uh, those numbers. Mm -hmm. How difficult is that really to, uh, it seems like quite a, a challenge to it is. It is challenging, yeah, it is absolutely challenging. And uh, uh, it's not easy theoretically. Uh, we can obviously uh, have a good estimate of the efficiency uh, of the mechanical system that we're designing. But estimating the power output uh, it's not easy. So, power our, our power output will determine your uh, uh, how much it would cost because we would know how much it takes to build and maintain, uh, and then if you know how much energy you're producing, then you can calculate how much it's what your return on investment yeah, is, watt or kilowatt, <coughs> and then you will see how it falls into the bigger picture, you know, other energy sources. Um, but power output, again, this is the most uh, tricky part. So it re really requires electrical engineering, mechanical engineering. You need to bring in uh, people who know about waves and yes. weather. And yeah. yeah, you probably would need to bring people from the College of Freshwater Sciences, people who deal with, uh, with the lake. So you need really a very uh, diverse uh, group to actually bring this to use. Yeah, this is a, a multidisciplinary task. Uh, which one particular discipline cannot tackle on its own? Uh, so I mean that's that's what makes it exciting for me. And I had actually a, a meeting this week in the College of Freshwater Sciences and. Uh, there are people who are interested in doing new things, and uh, I think we can actually start the collaboration with them using this project as a, oh, as a kind of catalyst. Because I was thinking, we have several uh, kind of points of contact with them, things to do or want to do, but this might be one uh, because we already have done some work, and uh, mm -hmm. there are uh, people who do work with uh, underwater robotics. There are people who do work with um, measuring different things in the lake using buoys. So they're very familiar with the environment. Yeah, absolutely familiar with the environment. They have a, a, a research ship that they take out and you know, service the buoys and deploy things around. So, um, so they have a lot of uh, interesting things. You know that ship can be used as a, as a testing ground. You set up one of the rocket systems on deck okay. as the ship goes. 
Because one, uh, another thing that I was thinking is um, you might want to have this system to generate auxiliary power on the ship to have a, uh, you know, a ferry or something else or a container ship that spends, you know, months in the sea or almost every day in the sea. Uh, they have to recharge their batteries. So sure. They have their own contained power generation system. And if it's a ferry and you generate a lot of power, you might use that power to charge electric vehicles that are on that ferry, you know, right yeah. from Wisconsin to Michigan. What a good idea. Uh, you, mean, get, you get to your destination and you're charged up and ready to, ready to go. So. I can see you, you have been thinking about this. You have a lot of ideas. I have, a, I have another project that deals with the electric vehicles, so I, I'm always thinking about how to charge them. Mm -hmm. The range is the biggest issue right now. You don't get a lot of range, mm -hmm. um, and uh, so you try to charge everywhere, and you try to charge fast. And, uh, you cannot charge fast right now. The battery technology is not there. You will be. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. so, you know, uh, how you're envisioning your um, approach, or uh, what is your proposal? To the higher level, means, means higher level people involved. So it's, um, it's a lot of work to be done to yes. bring somebody, some outer, um, yeah. outside, outside player who come with, with um, money yeah. to start. So how we can approach? <coughs> so there are different uh, strategies here, and. Uh, I'm not sure which one would be the most efficient. So one strategy would be treat it as a research project. And then there is the whole methodology and process of acquiring resources to conduct this research. Mostly writing proposals and planning for grants and agencies like National Science Foundation, Department of Energy, EPA. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe applying to some uh, grants on the state level, since we, you know, we live by the lake, maybe there's some money there. But I'm not sure about that. Yeah. So that's one way. And it's uh, usually a long way, the time constant is very large. And it has a small chance of uh, success, by 10 to 20 percent funding rate. So, so you have to prepare yourself for a, a long haul in that direction. Another way would be to try to do it uh, from a commercial point of view, which would mean um, try to make a product that people will buy. And uh, if you approach it that way, then it's a totally different funding mechanism. Uh, then you're basically looking for uh, uh, investors. Or you're looking for people who will buy the product if you can make it. So, if you would want to go that way, then the first step would be building a, a, a prototype because you really need to test it. A to, working prototype. You need to take it out in the water mm -hmm. and get the data and then output the energy output you can get out of it before you start writing a business plan or a business model. Uh, ultimately, the only number that people will look at would be how much each watt of energy will cost. Mm -hmm. so, uh, even, I don't know what that number will be, but there are other things that are important. Things like uh, you can use this in the areas where you cannot use wind or solar and it's deployable. And those are the benefits, but they should outweigh the uh, other Class. cost, or maybe you know, maybe it's not as efficient as wind, or, or maybe it's more efficient. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and then if you approach it like a business and you have a prototype that gives you some idea, then then you start discovering your market or your customer. Would be your customer would buy it, 
And that probably would break down into different segments depending on the size of this. So we were talking about the uh, powering a village, right? So then you probably are dealing with uh, humanitarian organizations that would probably mm -hmm. buy this as a deployable power generation system in uh, areas of disaster. Uh, <coughs> Uh, actually, Hurricane Sandy showed that you know it doesn't have to be a village; it can be a mm -hmm. island of Manhattan, mm -hmm. where you, where you can use it. So, uh, uh, state, city, local, uh, federal government might acquire this. Uh, FEMA might acquire this mm -hmm. uh, as well. Uh, Something you could have in a shipping container, exactly. get there, get on it, and deploy. And then the water, yeah, generates power. Mm -hmm. uh, Maybe you want it to be uh, auxiliary power for ships, then you have to talk to people who manufacture ships or sh people who operate them. Because if you can deploy it after market, you know, once the ship is built, that's fine too. Mm -hmm. uh, you can definitely talk to a military. Um, they want power all the time. Uh, you take any fleet, they spend a lot of time and see it, they need power. So. Use it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, then you can think of uh, um, maybe make it uh, uh, for someone who lives on a lake, or by somebody who has a lakefront property, and looking for auxiliary power. So then it becomes small, uh, compact size, you know, something new. Uh, remote research stations, where they don't have power. Remote research stations. Now, yeah, now we're talking about uh, buoys and things like that. Uh, offshore drilling to other markets. So, as you can see, there's thousands of lots of lots of applications. But then you need, you have to discover them. You need to talk to them and find out whether they need it or not. Um, but you you want to show them something. You want to mm -hmm. show them. Uh, some success. So in this scenario, it's it's a lot um, a big investment up front to build a working model that actually produces. Um, but then, but then that's when you have something to show people, you yeah. have numbers, something to sell. Yeah. Before that, it's just an idea. Exactly. Um, there's uh, there's this kind of wisdom, common wisdom that <clears throat> when you want to become a millionaire, or you think your idea worth lots of zeros. Uh, the, the six zeros that makes you rich, or seven zeros, whatever number of zeros, uh, is actually in the ability to execute your idea. And the uh, idea is just a multiplier of those zeros. Mm. So if you have just an idea, it's just a number, a relatively small number. But the ability to execute that's what puts it into the yeah, from the category. From the zero, after three zeros, my mind cannot comprehend. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, it also depends on the currency, right? <laughs> it's like a ruble, then it's worthless. Um, there are ways to get acquired funding and sources for this small prototype work. Um, and um, that might be a path to take. I think it has potential, uh, especially if students are involved, it opens up a whole new world of funding that is only dedicated to students, make sure that they uh, do something meaningful. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, there's a couple of programs I already mentioned, National Collegiate and uh, Innovators and Matters Alliance, they have a grant, an annual grant, it's called E-Team Competition, E-Team meaning Entrepreneurial Team. And uh, they want to see uh, multidisciplinary teams work on something that can become a business, but it has to be a technological product. And uh, it has to tackle either healthcare issues or uh, issues relevant to the uh, third world population. And that fits perfectly. Mm -hmm. uh, our prototype in the class was actually geared towards that market. That's why I wanted to make it out of PVC pipes mm -hmm. and make sure that the bill of materials is uh, locally, uh, available. locally available and uh, affordable. Mm -hmm. So that is one way. And uh, I think the whole idea is an interesting, very interesting and 
project that might resonate very well uh, because it doesn't have this huge hurdle of uh, deploying it onshore, mm -hmm. which is uh, is difficult. And, uh, and it, uh, another um, kind of parenthesis potential problem I see with deployment onshore is uh, if a hurricane comes or a uh, you know, tidal wave and it can just wipe out the system because it's so, uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's vulnerable. It's vulnerable, yeah. And it's, you don't want to over design it. It has to be very nimble and efficient and light mm -hmm. and it makes it uh, weak against the power of nature. Uh, the whole idea is just fantastic in my mind. And if, if a hurricane is coming, uh, you can tow it into the harbor? Absolutely. Or out, out of harm's way? Absolutely. So, uh, I, would, I would like to pursue this whole idea. I would like to uh, team up with the College of Freshwater Sciences and have a team of engineers and students from College of Freshwater Sciences uh, and maybe team up with someone who understands the climate a little bit. Mm -hmm. But ultimately with the goal of making a, you already made a, a, a scale, scale prototype. Yes. Uh, make it on a scale where you can actually uh, take it to the lake, to the active wake zone. Tested. So now you have to build a boat. <laughs> so you know, after we finish all this uh, video of the all three ideas put together in one package, uh, how easy or how difficult it is to give the final presentation and show it to our chancellor? How it's not difficult. Uh, we can organize. Uh, uh, well, meeting is easy to organize. Absolutely. Yeah. Can we yeah. maybe uh, schedule a meeting with him or three of us to go and yeah. present yeah. in the office? Or yeah, I would bring him here. Yeah, I would bring. Uh, I'd like to bring uh, maybe a few more people who would be interested. Uh, I'm thinking Tom Conce. Uh, I mentioned him. he's a professor. He has dual appointment in freshwater sciences and chemical engineering. Mm -hmm. He's a biologist by training, but he, is, he does underwater robotics. And, uh, he would certainly have some good ideas in terms of implementation. Uh, can you be instrumental to yeah. make a meeting? Yeah, I can, I can organize it. And we can even have uh, our new dean of engineering, John, who must have some ideas. And also, he, he just joined in September. He, probably had never heard about this project, so it would be nice to put a key on the map um, uh, and see what he has to say, but um, I'm confident we can make a prototype. The product realization course I teach, the fee is $7,500. Um, if there is a fee behind it, there's somebody who's interested to sponsor it you'll have a working prototype in three months. Mm. And it's guaranteed. That's the goal of this class, to make a working prototype. So that's the, probably the cheapest way of getting it done. Uh, but there are other ways. And uh, the grant I mentioned, the MCA grant, the team grant, it's 25,000 for a team. So then you can take your initial prototype to a really good level. Mm. And, uh, then you can have you know business students and all. But also uh, startup challenge, you have your student startup challenge. Uh, the little program uh, I go around with a couple of other people. Uh, we encourage students to launch their businesses uh, in technology. So, and we give each team $10,000 mm -hmm. to build a prototype uh, and create a business model in 
one year. So if you think that you can just have a team of students uh, working on that and try to launch your business, would you be the advisors, mentors, co-owners, <coughs> whatever you come up with? Mm -hmm. uh, we can find these students for you and they can apply and uh, the application will be out in a couple of months. By the summer we will know who will sponsor for the next year. And then they get a thousand dollars and then they will actually go through a very uh, rigorous process of getting the business away on the ground. That might be actually not a bad idea. It would be good to have a bunch of energetic, bright, young minds working on, on the project. And as a matter of fact, uh, our original, right now we're sponsoring three this year. And they're all all over the engineering map, the projects. For the next call, we're adding an extra track or challenge, which will be mobile apps. So students who want to develop mobile apps and create a business around it they will apply. We'll have the general technology track, which is hardware, and then we're thinking of having a clean energy track, mm -hmm. which is the whole perfect mm -hmm. um, Because clean energy track has interesting implications. Um, the reason why we even started thinking about it uh, is because state has a competition in green energy. It's a business plan competition. If you win it, you go to a national competition. Uh, all of it is sponsored by the Department of Energy. If you win that one, you get like half a million dollars. Wow. That's, a, that's a price. Yeah, and even state has a certain good money. So we were thinking that we would like UWM student to compete in those. But right now we don't have the critical mass. So creating a track would tell our students that there's definitely a path that they can take. Mm -hmm. And um, I see this as uh, one of the very strong candidates to actually win the track. Obviously there will be people with some solar power ideas and others, but this one is so ahead already in development and that this can be a really good project. So if you're interested about thinking in that direction, uh, I can give you way more details on the Startup Challenge how it works. Okay. But uh, maybe we add it to the conversation. Yeah. Okay. So um, anything here? I, I think we've covered a lot of ground.